Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode four of the video series where I'm introducing the basics of Photoshop to photographers. In this episode, we're going to talk about adjustment layers. Before we begin, let's make sure that your Photoshop looks like my Photoshop. I'm in what they call the photography workspace. Check to see what yours is in. Go up to the top Windows menu and go down to Workspace and you can see that we have all these choices. If you've never used Photoshop before and you've opened it for the first time, you're probably in the Essentials Workspace and you can see the right panel looks considerably different. So go up to Window, Workspace, make sure you're in the Photography Workspace. Now, adjustment layers, what are they? Well, they're what they say. They're adjustments that you could do to your image and there are actually layers that will be put on top of whatever layers you already have. For example, we have this image here and if we look over at the right hand layers panel there's just one layer there, the actual background layer, no adjustments have been done to the image. So I want to do an adjustment to it, any adjustment. Now if I look over here you'll see two tabs, libraries and adjustments. And under this Adjustment tab, you'll see a number of different adjustments. These are the adjustment layers. And many of these are very similar to adjustments you could do in, let's say, Lightroom. But these adjustments have distinct advantages over Lightroom. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, this first adjustment that I'm going to do is, let's say, just a simple brightness contrast adjustment and if I hover over any of these icons you'll see that the name of the adjustment appears above it and if I linger over it for a little bit you'll see a little tooltip will pop up and give you a little more info about each of these adjustment layers so I want to adjust brightness contrast I'm gonna click on that and you'll see immediately another layer forms above that layer that we had the background layer and we have this little flyout that came up with the two adjustments, brightness, contrast. So I could turn brightness up, I could turn brightness down, I could adjust contrast accordingly. So let's just say I want to do a slight adjustment here. Now this adjustment layer will adjust the brightness and contrast for every layer below it. It will not affect any layer above it. So any in this case it only has one layer below it but if there were a number of layers it would adjust the brightness and contrast for all those layers as it's set up now so I like this adjustment I'm done with it I could pick another adjustment I could close this little window down by clicking right here this little double arrow just click right there and now we have our brightness adjustment adjustment layer now the next one to the right of that is what they call the levels adjustment this is a very, very powerful adjustment layer that you will find that you'll use quite often in Photoshop. You'll see it has a histogram. And also, like many of the adjustment layers, there are some drop downs and presets. You can see we have a preset here, and we could look at it, and we could increase contrast three different degrees contrast one, two, and three. We could lighten shadows, we could make the midtones brighter, the midtones darker. So let's just for the sake of argument pick increase contrast 3 and you can see it increase the contrast of the image and it moves sliders accordingly. Now let's say you adjust something with an adjust any adjustment layer and you don't like what you did. You could delete the adjustment layer by making sure that's the one that's active by clicked on it. Let's say I want to delete this one. I could hit the delete key on my keyboard. I could click right here this little garbage can and delete it that way. Or what if I don't want to delete it, I just want to reset it back to its default values. In that case, I would just click this little backward circular arrow thing there, and that's reset. So I reset it. So let's just go into a little more in-depth in this adjustment layer, because I mentioned it is an important one that you'll use quite often. You can see we have the histogram, and right now we're affecting all three channels, the red, green, and blue channel. And at that drop-down, you could actually just affect the red channel, green channel, or blue channel individually. But in this case, for this video, we're going to do all three. And that's typically what you would do. And we, you'll see below the histogram we have three sliders. This is your white point, this is your black point, and right in the middle is your midpoint. 
And if I take, let's say, this white point slider and move it to the left, I'm just adjusting my white point. So I'm making the image brighter. And you can see that midpoint stays in the middle of the two sliders as I move it around. Conversely, this far left slider is the black point. And if I move that to the right, I'm adjusting the black point. And that midpoint slider moves with it. Now you can move that midpoint slider individually or by itself, and you're just adjusting where the mid-tones start and or end with that slider. So that is your mid slider, the midpoint slider. Below that, we have these two sliders, and this is kind of like a shadows and um, highlights adjustment. So I could uh, bring highlights down, I could open shadows up with those. So quite often you'll find that you want to maybe, you know, set your black point down a little bit so the, you know, the darker parts of the image are a little darker, or you want to open up your, your uh, highlights a little bit, you want to move these sliders around. And this is, like I said, something that you'll do quite often because this is a very commonly used adjustment layer. Now we'll just keep moving on. We have the curves adjustment. This is the same exact thing as the tone curve in Lightroom, and you can see we have a tone curve. And similarly to Lightroom, we have presets. And I often use the tone curve in Lightroom to add contrast to my image. And I use a preset medium contrast. And you can see that same preset is here, medium contrast. And it gives us this slight S curve, and it added contrast to the image. Now, you could come in here and manually move the things around or add another point to this curve and move it around that way. And if you really don't like what you did to the image, you could reset it right there. But in this case, I think I'm going to add the medium contrast like I typically like for my images. So that is the curves adjustment layer. Now to the right of that is exposure. This, a lot of people get confused because this does similar things that the brightness contrast does. And when you open it, you see it has three sliders, exposure, offset, and gamma correction. I'm not going to go into a lot of big detail about all these different adjustments. As a matter of fact, we're not going to do all the adjustment layers. I'm just going to give you an overview of the more common ones we use. This one isn't used quite as much. You could just come in here and increase exposure. There are presets to add one or two stops exposure or decrease exposure by one or two stops. Uh, the offset and gamma confuse people a lot. Um, typically what that is let's say with offset you'll be affecting the darker parts of the image and this slider is sensitive you just move it a little and you could see how it really just made that dark part way dark just move it up a little and you make it really bright so this will mainly affect the darker parts of the image the gamma correction affects more of the midtones and you can see if I move it to the right or left, it's affecting more midtones. Now, if you want to reset an individual slider, you just need to double click on the name of the slider. So if I want to reset gamma correction to its default position, just double click on gamma correction. That works with all the adjustment layers. So you can just double click on the actual name of the slider and you could reset them individually. Now we have, in this case, three eyedroppers and you could set the black point, you could set the midpoint or the gray point they call it, or you could set the white point. So what you would do is you would click on let's say this this white point slider and you would click on something in the image that should be white, like let's say this cloud right here. And it will adjust the sliders accordingly so you have a properly exposed image. You could do that similarly for something in that's a mid midtone or something that's a black, it's supposed to be black in the image. So we'll leave that for now. Now, to the right of that is vibrance, and that's the same exact thing in Lightroom as the vibrance and its saturation sliders in uh, Lightroom. If you move vibrance up, it will increase the saturation of every color in the image that isn't already saturated or near saturation. Conversely, the saturation slider will increase or decrease, if you move it to the left, the saturation of every single color in the image, even if it is saturated or near saturated. So more or less, you will oversaturate some of the colors with the saturation slider. 
and the vibrant slider tends to not oversaturate some of the colors. It'll just bring them to saturation. That's theoretically what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to delete this adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click this little garbage can. So that one's deleted. Now it automatically went and selected the adjustment layer below it. Now I'm just going to close that down. So you can see we have four adjustment layers so far. Now I'm going to skip over to this image and you can see this is a scanned negative. And those of you that watch my Lightroom videos know that I did do a video for Lightroom on how to convert a scan negative. And it was a multi-step process and it was a little tricky. It's super easy to do in Photoshop. You just get a curves adjustment layer and you'll see one of the presets, the very first one as a matter of fact, is color negative. Just click there and you converted your scan negative into a positive. So it's real easy to do. Now this next image I want to show you another feature or one of the features that make adjustment layers very powerful and why they might be desirable to be used over something like Lightroom. Like we mentioned, you could in Lightroom you could adjust vibrance, saturation, brightness, contrast, and you could do that all with adjustment layers. So why would you want to come into Photoshop and do it? Well, let's say I want to get a black and white adjustment layer for this image. That is this little icon right here. So I click there and we see that the image immediately turned black and white and we have these sliders similar to Lightroom when we convert an image to black and white using the HSL color panel in Lightroom we get these balance sliders and you could come in here and you could adjust the luminance levels of anything that was that color in the image so we could make the reds tone brighter or darker and so on so so far we're exactly like Lightroom well, this is where adjustment layers are a little better than what you could do in Lightroom. Because it's a layer, and it comes with a layer mask, you could actually mask in or out the adjustment on certain parts of the image. So, for example, I'd like the eyes to stay in color, but I want the rest of the image to be in black and white. So I'm going to click on the layer mask. Make sure you're clicked on the mask. And you'll remember we covered this in episode two where we masked in some windows in that room that was in the basilica. So I want to do this with this image here. So I'm clicked on the mask and I need to get a brush. So I'm going to hit the B key on the keyboard uh, to get a brush or you could click right here. There's our brush and then we have these color swatches and we want to make sure they're like this black and white. If you have different colors here than black and white you want to hit the D key on your keyboard. That's for default colors. That'll give you the default black and white. And since we have a white mask we want to paint in black. So we want to make sure that this black swatch is the front swatch. So we'll hit the X key on our keyboard and it will swap them. Now we have our brush and we simply could paint on our eyeball there and paint on our eyeball there. And now if you look at the mask, now I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and it's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac and you could see that I just painted in black on the mask and it allows the color from this bottom layer, the background layer to come through. Now I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in again and click on the mask again and we're back to showing both layers one on top of the other and you could see that the adjustment layer on top is taking the color out of everywhere but the mask is allowing the color to come through from that bottom layer so that is a real advantage of these adjustment layers you could apply that uh, the effect that the adjustment layer is doing or you could apply the adjustment to, that the adjustment layer is doing to a specific part of the image that you want for example, let's say you have a sky and the sky is too blue. You could come in and you could get a, a vibrant saturation layer and bring some of the vibrance and or saturation down, but then use the mask so it's only being applied to the sky. So there's a lot of instances where this comes in really handy. Now, to kind of close everything off, I'm going to show this image here. And this is going to be another feature of adjustment layers, which really comes in handy. I have this image here, and it's actually two layers. We have this background layer, which is the image of the pond. 
but the sky was very boring. So I swapped the sky out. I added this layer, which is just the sky. And you could see there's a selection there. And next week, we're going to be talking about selections and how we take and do selections and why we would want to make a selection of an image. Well, this is one instance where I had to do a selection to select out this original sky. I selected that and I used that selection to add another sky. But as far as adjustment layers are concerned, if we look at the image right now, we have the two layers. It appears that the pond, this bottom layer, is brighter than the sky. The sky just seems a little bit too dark. So I want to add a brightness contrast adjustment layer to this image. The thing is, when I add it, now it's added there, if I want to make the sky brighter and I move this brightness slider to the right, it brightens the entire image. Well, there's a little trick that comes with the adjustment layers. If you look right here, there's a little square box with a down arrow. That's called the clip. You're going to clip this adjustment to the layer directly below it. So you just click there and you can see then we have this down arrow. That means that this adjustment layer is being applied to that layer directly below it. And that's it. It's not going to be applied to any other layer. And you could see it's only affecting the sky. It's not affecting the pond. So I could, in this instance, I could better balance the brightness level of the pond with the sky or the sky to the pond. And that's called clipping it. That's the clipping layer. So those are the two main things that adjustment layers are have an advantage over something like Lightroom. Yes, many of the adjustments are similar to adjustments you could do in Lightroom, but you could mask out part of the image so the adjustment is only being applied to a specific part of the image you want it applied to, and or you could clip it to a specific layer so it will only aff affect that specific layer that you want it to affect. And um, you'll see that you'll, you'll be using adjustment layers all the time. And like I mentioned, this is just an introduction. We didn't go through all of them, but we went through most of the more common ones. Um, we do use photo filters now and then. Uh, don't use channel mixers too much personally, and I don't use channel lookouts, uh, stuff like that, lookups, I'm sorry. But, you know, you'll see, I, I would encourage you to open up Photoshop, load an image in there, and just play with the adjustment layers and see what they do. And um, I think that way, you'll be more comfortable in the future when you really need to process an image and you want it to be perfect. So that's it for this episode. Next week, we're going to talk about selections and I'm going to introduce those and why we might want to use selections and the different tools that we use to make selections. All right. Until then, I'll talk to you guys soon.